Praise the Lord, everyone. Welcome to New Life Pentecostal Church, where we believe you can be rescued, redeemed, and restored. At this time, we're going to give it to our pastor so he can make the announcements. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It is good to be here tonight. Amen? Amen. How many of you enjoyed the asphalt being repaired? And Amen. amen. Being able to walk in without stepping over the construction Things that we've been dealing with the last uh, couple months. And man, we should get everything seal coated, which is like the pretty black, shiny coating over everything in the next few days and then get it restriped. Uh, I, I will say when we restripe it, we're going to reconfigure some of the parking a little bit, how it's turned a little bit to make it not as tight and easier to get cars in and out. Also, we're looking at uh, perhaps making the bottom an entrance and exit up here. We're looking at that, how traffic to keep it flowing, make it a little safer. Um, but anyway, just kind of something to be on the lookout for. I know it's different. People don't react well to change. But understand, sometimes we change for the better, to make it safer and, and work better. As always, I want to welcome you tonight to New Life Pentecostal Church, where we believe that you can be rescued, redeemed, and restored. That's right. Amen. As you can scan the QR code to get service time announcements. Also, we are almost at the end of construction of this uh, building next door, and we're it's almost finished. We should have a final inspection next week. Uh, literally, all that's left is some rubber base. Put the logo down. Um, clean the floor. Um, a few other little small things, and we are done. Uh, of course, we do got to put the basketball goals in, but that will not stop the final inspection. We're very close. Um, then we'll spend the next couple weeks as we're moving in. We're going to kind of set the offices, things back in order. We're going to come through as we work on Tuesday night, put a fresh coat of paint on the areas that have been just heavily, you know, wore down with a lot of traffic, the hallways and things like that. Uh, and then we, we are back to normal. Uh, to, uh, but we're, we'll soon be back on our Tuesday night schedule uh, normal, and I want to get everybody back uh, at the new year, back in prayer on Tuesday nights, if you can be here. I'm telling you, prayer changes the church, and, there's, and it, it helps the church. Working on Tuesday night was necessary because of time and things like that, but there's nothing spiritual about building. There's nothing spiritual about construction. Amen. As a matter of fact, I... The more you didn't work, and I, I was here by myself, I got carnal sometimes. Amen. Amen. But there's nothing spiritual about it. Uh, and, and that's why it, being spiritual throughout construction is such a challenge. Uh, but we're almost at the end. Amen. I'm so thankful to be where we are at right now. And when we're done, we'll be back in the flow, praying on regular on Tuesday nights. Bible study and things like that, small group, we are going to hit the ground running first of the year in revival. Amen. As a matter of fact, uh, moving right, I'll, just, I'll get to this in a moment. Remember tithes and offerings. Remember to be faithful. Remember to give. Amen. Faithfully as the Lord has blessed you. Uh, remember to listen to our podcast radio on Saturday from 11 to 1 on the Piper Peach Gospel app. Very easy to download and listen. If you follow the church, you will find the link and you can download and, and do all that very easily. Also, tonight is the very last night for the Rada knife, Arada knife orders. This was to raise money for our Sunday school classrooms to help our teachers have new tables and chairs. If you have not made a purchase and you'd like, a make, like to make a purchase tonight, and you're someone that has been actively selling with an order form. Will you raise your hand so I can see who you are? Sister Sharon's one right there. Okay. Hold on. What Right there. So if you're here tonight and you would like to make a purchase before you leave, please go see her. Sister Sharon, about how much have you sold worth? A little over $1,200. Amen. That's tremendous. Let's, let's congratulate her. Amen. We had one online purchase of almost $250, right around $250. Amen. We, we're grateful for that. Also, Others First October. We are in Others First October. So, to, uh, come Sunday morning, 
I want you to bring infant care items. That's diapers, formula, baby lotion, things a infant needs in an emergency. Uh, and that will be stocked in our emergency pantry. So please, let's bring that on Sunday morning. Also, uh, tonight is Boys and Girls Bible Study Night. So uh, they will split in the boys and the girls. And they'll, they'll do their thing tonight uh, after music. Also, October the 20th, this Sunday is All Nations Sunday. Uh, they'll, the youth will set up in the foyer the different tables. And they will have all their countries represented. It is going to be awesome. You don't want to miss that. You want to bring a guest to that uh, and support our young people. Also, music practice uh, for those in the mu on the music team, 2 o'clock this Sunday. Next Sunday, the 27th, or the following Sunday, outreach here at the church at 2 o'clock. I want a, 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 just a resounding amen for those that are going to try to be here. Amen. Buddy, we'll hit every door in the church, in the, in the city, with that many people. Amen? I'm looking forward to outreach. Amen. Uh, Fall Festival, October the 30th. I am looking forward to it. Unless there is a catastrophe with building inspections, we will have a Fall Festival in that building. <clears throat> Amen. November the 2nd and the 3rd. November 2nd. And third, we will be having homecoming revival. We, we will be having a Saturday night revival here at the church at 6 o'clock. And on Sunday morning, homecoming is going to consist of, uh, of revival services. And then dinner in the fellowship hall. Amen? Amen. It's, and it, I don't know what homecoming you're used to somewhere else. But homecoming here is going to be revival. Amen, it's going to be revival. I want to see somebody baptized in the Holy Ghost. And then after God's done moving, we'll move over in the next building. We'll fill our bellies up. But first, God's got to fill us with his spirit. Amen. Amen. All right, no food or drinks in the sanctuary besides clear water. Let's stand together tonight as we get ready to worship. Brother Elijah is going to open us with prayer tonight. Let's greet him as he comes tonight. Amen. How many of y'all are glad to be in the house of the Lord tonight? Amen. If it's okay, Pastor, I'd like to share a word that I feel like is important tonight that God has been dealing with me on the, on the way here. And it starts in John 2 and 7. Jesus saith unto them, fill the water pots with water, and they fill them up with, to the brim. And he saith unto them, draw out now and bear unto the governor of the feast, and they bear it. When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine and, not, and knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew. I mean, I'm going to read that again. But the servants which drew the water knew. I mean, you've got something on the inside of you. You've got something that the Lord has given you that you know, but the world doesn't. And the world is longing for it. It goes on to say that the governor knew that it was good. I mean, there's something inside of you that's good. I believe there's going to be callings made in this service. I believe that there will be people and lives changed in this service. I mean, if y'all will praise and worship with me as we go into prayer. Lord God, I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would just move in the service in a mighty way. Oh God, I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would loose... Lord God, chains of bondage and chains of hindrance, oh God, I pray that you would move in a mighty way in this service tonight, oh God, I bind and rebuke anything that could come against this service in the name of Jesus, I pray, amen, y'all worship with us.
this time, if we could have the ushers come to tonight, take tonight's tithes and offerings. Brother Dennis, if you'll pray for it. seconds and let's lift our voices to the Lord in adoration and worship tonight hallelujah hallelujah Jesus Lord we worship you we adore you we magnify you Jesus hallelujah hallelujah come on and lift up the name of the Lord worship him 
Hallelujah. 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 Amen. One last thing before we dismiss. Amen. Uh, this past Sunday, we had a lot of people out, uh, a lot of regular folks out. A lot of it was due to uh, a long weekend or out of town. Uh, and there was some sickness too and even uh, a death. Uh, let's, and we had about 50 out. Um, let's try our best. Unless it's an emergency, the next two weeks, let's try to everybody be in the house of the Lord. Amen. The next two weeks, let's try to plan for that because we have a lot of things going. Uh, we've got, I want to support our young people this coming Sunday with All Nations Sunday. I want them to get a lot of support from the church because as a part of that service, we're going to take up a mission offering. That's what the children are doing this for is to spotlight missions. And even if you don't have much to give, even if it's a dollar or something, try to be here and support them. The kids are putting a lot of work in this. And then the following week is, <clears throat> is outreach. And I want as many people to be here and to be a part of outreach as can because it's, it's about soul winning. Amen. Soul winning. I am fully expecting for bondage and chains uh, and principalities that the enemy's got on people to start breaking in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So at this time, without any further hesitation, I do want to greet our guests tonight. So good to have a uh, guest here tonight with Sister Sierra. God bless you. Let's welcome her tonight with a hand clap. Welcoming. Amen. Amen. Uh, at this time, dismiss the musicians and the singers and the teachers, the boys and girls Bible study. It's important for you boys to follow your teachers, okay? Do not run away from them because they're going to take you somewhere specific. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. We're going to be in Romans chapter 8 tonight. Amen. I have felt good in the Lord here tonight. How about you? Anybody felt just the joy of the Lord in the house tonight? And they did so well. Amen. They did so well singing. And uh, man, I love that song. Oh, I want to see him. Amen. I want to see the Lord. And we're going to talk a little bit about seeing the Lord tonight. Amen. You know, Sister Kay, we sing, oh, I want to see him. But there's a sad part is that everybody's not going to see him. And that is a sad thing. And I want to talk to you a little bit about it tonight. Uh, I'm going to tell you a lot of good news, but I'm going to show you some true, real news too. And I think that's important for us to get a handle on. Amen. The ushers make sure all the kids got into their place and they're all safely where they need to be. We're, we're in Romans, the eighth chapter. And the book of Romans, as I've said many times, is a beautiful chapter. And we will not get all the way through it tonight. But I am going to be teaching on several of the themes in this chapter tonight. And he covers a lot of ground, but I'm going to spend a great deal of time on about the first three scriptures in chapter 8. If you have your Bible, say amen. Amen. Uh, if you don't have your Bible, I want you to put your eyes on the board as they throw it up there for us tonight. Uh, it's particularly verse 1. Amen. There they go. It says, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Man, how many of you are familiar with that scripture? And how many of you can almost quote it pretty much word for word? Pretty close. Or you, if you heard it, you could kind of help fill in the blanks. Yeah, we're familiar with that one. And 
It's one of those like scriptures that when we say it, we're like, yeah, no condemnation to those in Jesus. And that's kind of where we leave it. That's kind of, we don't like to quote the second half of it and kind of understand that it, they're the duality of what is being said. And, and I'm, I'm saying this because this needs to be an eye-opener to some people. It really does. Because, you know, the Bible says that not everybody that cries, Lord, Lord, will be saved. There are going to be some people that did a lot of things, went to a lot of church services, that are going to stand at the judgment seat of Christ. And they're going to brag to the Lord about everything they did. He's going to say, depart. Never knew you. A lot of people that like to play church and show church. And there's, there's hypocrites and there's sinners that come. And this is the best place for a sinner and a hypocrite to be. Maybe they can pray through. But then there's a lot of folks that have a form of godliness and they think they're good. But they have no real connection to the Lord because they are not walking in the fullness of what this verse is teaching. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. So this scripture while it is true is a conditional scripture. And before I go any further I want to I paint a difference to you in a couple words. Everybody knows that there's no condemnation to them that are in Christ right? Amen. There's a difference in condemnation and conviction. Condemnation's a bad thing. Conviction's a good thing. Amen. When you're in the house of God, whether you're, it's your first day or you've been living for God 10 years, it's good to feel fresh conviction. Amen. That's godly sorrow. The Bible says godly sorrow worketh repentance. That's how we grow. That's how we get better. That's how we grow, grow in the things of God is we hear the word of God and we learn something or the Lord shows us something we didn't know before and we fall under conviction and we respond to it in obedience. But the problem with condemnation, and it's where a lot of people have gotten to, they're under condemnation because they're not in the Lord. Condemnation is, and I want to, I've got some notes. I want to be real scientific for you if I could. Condemnation there in our Bible comes from the Greek word that is katakrima. And it, here's what it means in the Greek. It means damnatory sentence. Or what it means is you have been sentenced in judgment. So what the scripture says if you're in Christ Jesus, you have, you're not under the sentence of death due to, and punishment of sin. But you have to be in Christ. Amen? Now what does that mean? Well, the Bible says if any man be in Christ, he's a, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. All things have become new. So if you're in Christ Jesus... And you're no longer under condemnation. You're different than you used to be. I was sitting at lunch doing Bible study with someone yesterday. And we talked about getting a true touch of the Holy Ghost. I said when God gets a hold of you. It'll change you. Moses went up on the mountain and spent time with God. And his face began to shine. Right? We know that. Jacob wrestled, some, the Bible says in some places he at, wrestled with an angel of the Lord. Some places he wrestled with the Lord. Either way, whether it was God himself in some form or an angel, he still wrestled with the power of God. And what, what does the Bible say happened? That the angel smote the hollow of his thigh and he walked with a limp. If you'll get in Christ, you'll behave differently. Think about this. I believe it's Thessalonians that says it like this. If a brother gets in the wrong after first or second admonition, you put him out. Why? 
Because the scripture teaches when you get in Christ, you need to make up your mind you're going to learn how to behave. Amen? And one of the biggest things as pastor that I worry and stress is getting on and teaching and trying to poke and prod the same foolish things over and over and over again. And what I begin to see is those people are not in Christ. They're not in Christ because they're not behaving according to the word. And there's no brother Allen, there's no amount of correcting and leading and pushing and prodding I can do to fix them until they make up their mind. I'm going to serve God. I'm going to live for God. I'm going to live for God. And so if you are in Christ, there is no condemnation. Here's how you know you're in Christ. You don't walk after the flesh, but after the spirit. Amen? How do you know you walk after the flesh? If you do everything that pleases the flesh, you're walking after the flesh. If you only want to be entertained, you're walking after the flesh. If you only want to be pleased, you're after the flesh. To walk in what God wants of you is going to be something you don't want. It's going to be something you don't want. Amen? It's going to be something you don't like. You don't necessarily find fun. I talked to his brother Crowder. He and I talked a while back, and I asked him. I said, if somebody asked you, how do you know if you're called of God? What would be your answer? And I asked several people this, you know, because everybody's kind of got their answer, and we got these deep philosophical answers, you know. But let's say somebody asked you, we talked about it, and I said, here's what my answer would be. If you have to wonder if you're called of God, you're not. You're not. Because if you are called of God, whether you have accepted it and are obeying, you know it. Amen. You know it. You know it. You know what God wants of you or you don't. If you've heard it, if you've heard the word, let me say this. If you have heard this scripture, you know what God says. If you've heard the voice of God, you knew it was God. Amen? If you've read this scripture or heard it preached, you know it was the voice of God. You knew it was. If God impressed on you in his spirit, you knew it was him. You knew it was him. So, the question is, if you knew it and didn't do it, what is that? To him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. That is where we are walking after the flesh. Because we knew God spoke it, and we did something else. We did the opposite. And that's how we find ourselves not under conviction, but under condemnation. You with me right now? For the law of the spirit, the law of the spirit is life in Christ Jesus. Had made me free from the law of sin and death. So if you, there are two laws. You got the law of the flesh, the word. And you got the law of the spirit. If you have Christ, if you have the baptism of the Holy Ghost, just like the Word of God said, with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, as the Spirit gives the utterance, you are not under the law of the flesh, but under the law of the Spirit. I will teach you that. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through flesh, God sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh. And for sin, condemn sin in the flesh. Now, I'm going to back up and kind of tell you a little bit of what he's saying there. What the law could not do because it was weak through the flesh. That scripture is not saying that God's word was weak. What it was saying was you could not in the flesh keep the law and be made holy because you cannot keep the law. insufficient not that the word was insufficient but the method was insufficient because no man will ever live righteous enough to earn salvation because he's gonna sin you see the difference between Jesus Christ in the flesh and you and I in the flesh is the Bible says that 
He came in the likeness of sinful flesh. We are sinful flesh. There's a difference. He looked like sinful flesh, but he was like Adam before the fall in that he was pure, holy, and undefiled by sin. What the law could not do because it was weak, because it depended on a weak man to be obedient. Amen? I'm going to give you an example. How many of you know that you should be in church regularly? Have you ever had a period of time where you were not? So that was a simple one, but yet we, we didn't complete that one. Has there ever, do you, does everybody know that the Bible tells us that we should not speak perversely, profanely? We know it. Have you ever done it? You see what I'm saying? So you couldn't keep the law to earn your righteousness because through the flesh you're weak. And so that's why you have to have a different law governing you except you'll die lost. You've got to have the law of the Spirit. You must come under the governance of the Spirit of God in your life. Because unless you come under the law of the Spirit, you're under the law of the flesh. Verse 4, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. So Jesus came, and he came in the likeness of sinful flesh so that we could fulfill the righteousness of the law. Because we couldn't do it. He had to help us do it. He had to help us do it. He had to do what we can't do. Yeah, because, Brother Allen, I can keep a lot of the law, but there's going to be some parts I'm going to fail. And that's where Jesus, G Jesus didn't come for the things you can do. He came for the things you can't do. You can't make flesh holy. You can't make flesh righteous. But he can. Because he calleth those things that are not as though they were. He quickeneth the dead. That's what Scripture says. That's what Jesus can do. For they that are after the flesh, now here's what I want you to understand, because this is where a lot of people fall. If this would have been Sunday morning when everybody was in here, I'd have said this is where a lot of you fall, and then there'd have been enough people in here to where nobody felt singled out. Because it was Wednesday, though, that I said this is where a lot of people fall. Made it just vague enough you didn't know if it was you or not. You man, but you know. They that are after the flesh, those that are carnal is what that means, do mind or they do care about and do the things of the flesh. But they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. And I really don't expect a lot of amen in here because we all should get convicted. We all should just sort of sit there and take it, even me as I speak it, I have to hear it and let it live where I live. Amen? Because we all are weak through flesh. Amen? And we all have days, times, hours where we focus more on what the carnal man wants and not what the Spirit says. That, look in your Bible. Look in Revelations where John the Revelator was getting the word and he would say, Hear! He that hath the ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Open up your ear, your carnal ear, and hear what the Word of God through His Spirit is saying to you. Hear it. Come out of that stuff. For to be carnally minded is death. To be carnal is death. There is no excuse. To be carnally minded. To have a carnal mind. To have a mind and a thought process and a nature that only seeks to please the flesh is death. Now I'm going to like, I'm going to define death in that instance. Everybody's going to die a physical death. We know that. Unless you live to the coming of the Lord and you're caught up to be with the Lord in the air, you're going to die. The Bible says that though the grave worms eat this body, You're going to die. You're going to die. But, it's not what he's referring to. When he says to be carnally minded is death, that is spiritual disconnection and death. So, I don't care if you shout it on Sunday. 
if you walk out of this church, get in a fist fight with your neighbor, get in a bad attitude and cuss them out to boot, you done got in the carnality of your mind. And if you don't make that right with them and God, you're in the wrong, you're under sin, and you'll bust hell wide open. You cannot make it in carrying baggage. Let me say that again. Straight is the way and narrow is the gate. That gate is just narrow enough you can't make it through with baggage in your hands. You cannot make it in carrying in all that carnality, that lying, that false doctrine, that hypocrisy. You can't make it in the gate. Can't make it in. You will not make it through. Amen. I like the one, you know, it talks about the rich man. It's easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than a rich man into heaven. You hear what I'm saying? Listen. Here's, here, well, I want you to understand about that. Because it's hard for a rich man. Not that it's impossible, because with God all things are possible. But it's hard for a rich man because he's rich and he's self-sufficient and he don't want to humble himself. But in order after hours for that camel to, listen to me, pay attention, for that camel to get into the city after the gates are closed, he had to get down on his knees and be led until he crawled on his knees through that small, short opening. Except you humble yourself and you bring your flesh under subjection and your body under subjection. You will not see the Lord. Amen? The Bible says, in my flesh, I know that I shall see the Lord. What he meant was, I'll see the Lord with these eyes. But your sin won't. If when at the judgment bar, sinful spots your soul shall mar, sin can never enter there. You got to remember that. You know, what kept the church living for God all those years? What kept the church living for God? Help me focus, please. What kept the church living for God all those years was we understood that sin had no place in heaven. Sin's got no place there. Sin has no place in the body. Sin has no place in in the tabernacle of the Lord. When, I'm telling you, when the prophet of God was in the vision and seen the Lord, and he seen the house of God, he said, whoa, I'm a man of unclean lips. Before he could go on in the vision of God, an angel had to cleanse him. I'm going to mess with your theology. The Bible teaches that when Jesus died that the blood was sprinkled in heaven. It wasn't holy first. It got holy after that. You didn't know that was in there, did you? Well, it's in there. The blood was sprinkled in heaven. You mean they ain't an unholy place that God's created. Everywhere is holy. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. But to be carnally minded is enmity against God. If you choose to have a carnal mind, you are choosing to put yourself adversarially against the Lord. Joshua said, choose you this day who you're going to serve. Choose. Choose. Who you going to serve? I would rather just know now. Moses and Korah, they both were, there was friction there. Moses, the Bible said he, he was a godly man. It wasn't a, uh, that he was, I believe, was the meekest man that ever lived, the Lord said. Korah thought he should run the show. Moses said, that's fine. We're going to let God say who's going to run the show. He said, everybody that's with me and the Lord, you stay here. In the morning, everybody that's with Cora and his bunch, y'all go way over there. We're going to let God choose. I'll let, he, and he said it. He said, let God swallow them up. If it's me, let God swallow me up in the earth. If God don't want me. The next morning, 
those that were carnal, those that had enmity, those that were against God, he destroyed them. Amen. You've got to be willing to destroy the things in your life that are against God or they're going to destroy you. They're going to destroy you. When Moses come down off the mountain and he seen the people of God after he'd been on the mountain 40 days fasting and praying and seeking the Lord. And he'd been on the mountaintop with God and the fire and the vapor and smoke. It covered the mountain. The mountain so holy they weren't even allowed to put their foot on the edge of it. He come down and they're worshiping false gods, false doctrine, false religion. Broke the law. Made them melt down. That calf, that golden calf, put it in the water, made them drink it. You're going to have to take the medicine that you're living by. You're going to have to take the medicine one day you're living by if you choose to be against God. Are you saying I can't repent? I'm not saying you can't repent. I'm saying you're going to have to take your medicine one day and the medicine is the word of God. God's not mocked. God is not a fool. God will not be played. He said there's none righteous. No, not any. You've got to come under his way. Or there's no other way. The, the, here is the reason why it's important. Now, we're all made of flesh. But we've got to get out of the flesh and get of a spiritual mind. Why? Well, I, I like to do it this way. Well, God doesn't. I Bible studied with a man yesterday, and yes, I taught him the oneness of God. Just in case I ever go three services out without saying that. I taught him that there wasn't but one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God who's the Father of us all, in us all, and through all. I taught him. And he said, but I've never heard it that way before. I said, there's a first time to hear it right, though. And I said, he said, now, now what do I said, they know what doctrine? That's Bible. It's Bible. Bible. It's Bible. Turn in your Bible. He said, to where are you getting that from? I said, Deuteronomy 6 and 4, Hero Israel, Lord our God is one Lord. Can't, can't argue with that. You may tell you what, he'll be here November the 3rd in this church. He's going to be here. There's one Lord, one faith, one baptism. There's only one. I can't serve another. I can't look to the world to be my God. I can't look anywhere else. I can't look, I can't look at sports and recreation. I cannot look to women or, or men. I can't look to my job to be a God for me. There's one God. One God. There's one Lord. That's it. There's only one. Choose this day who you're going to serve. Who you're going to serve. Amen? Moses told him. He said... Tell you what, we're just close enough to Egypt. You can walk back. He said, you can serve the gods that were on the other side. Go on back. Go on back. You can serve those. But when you get to the Red Sea, somebody, and you make up your mind, I think I'm going to go back to Egypt and serve the gods. Try to remember what's at the bottom of the river. When you think you're going to go by, feel the Holy Ghost. When you think you're going to go back to the world, go back and look in the water and look what sin's got left behind. Look at what you walked away from when you went down in the water and you come up clean. Hear what I'm preaching to you tonight. Before you decide to backslide and before you decide to go back into Egypt, you need to go back to the water and look at what God brought you out of. Here's why it's so important to be in the Spirit. Verse 8, so they that are in the flesh cannot please God. If you do carnal things, you are not pleasing God. There's no, I'm negotiating with God. There's no, I've got a plan worked out with Him. The Bible said, I am the Lord, and I change not. He said, Who in whom there is no variableness, no shadow of turning. I like that shadow of turning. Because a shadow is just a little bit of darkness. 
The Lord hadn't even turned enough to put a shadow of darkness allowable. Not even a little bit. There's only one way. There's only one way. Let me tell you, and Sister Bean just said that I heard it, and it just brought a scripture to my mind. She said, no ignorance. There's no excuse for being ignorant, not knowing. There's no excuse for it. The Bible says in times past, God winked at ignorance. But now, he has commanded all men everywhere to repent. But if you're in the flesh, but you're not in the flesh, if you've got the Holy Ghost, you're not in the flesh. You're in the Spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if you don't have the Holy Ghost, you're in the flesh. That's, it. That's what that scripture says. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, you are carnal. If you don't have the Spirit of God in you, you're in the flesh. There's no way around it. I'm not picking on anybody. I'm not tearing anybody down the road other religions. I'm saying if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. And the only way to be in Christ is he's got to be in you. And if he ain't in you, you ain't in him. Because the Bible says in John 15, I am the vine, ye are the branches, he that abides in me. And I in him, the same brings forth much fruit. But without me, you can do nothing. Nothing. If you don't, now verse 9, now if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. What I'm telling you, if you've been carnal for a month and you ain't prayed in the Spirit and you're not full of the Holy Ghost and you come in the house of God and you're like, well, I'm going to have to pray through. Right then, you're not His. You need to pray through because you can't go on living that way. You cannot go on living not fired up with the Holy Ghost. You can't. You've got to stoke the fire of the Spirit in your life. I got, give me, can I have three minutes? I better not take ten. They'll revolt on me. I'm skipping. Let's skip to verse 12. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. For if you live after the flesh, you'll die. <laughs> You're dead. You're dead. You're going to go to hell. If you're going to live for the flesh, you're going to go to hell. But ye through the Spirit do mortify. Listen to what it says. But through the Spirit, by the help of the Holy Ghost, you do mortify, which means kill the deeds of the, flesh, the, deeds of the body, which is the flesh. You shall live. So if you'll get the Holy Ghost, and allow the Holy Ghost to lead you in His Word. As you learn the Word, you'll start laying down things. You'll do like the Scripture says, and you'll lay aside every way to sin that does so easily beset you. Running the race, amen. You'll start laying things down if you get full of the Holy Ghost and you start opening up your mind not to ignorance and not to gossip and deceit. And get all, I, I, can I start preaching against Facebook a little bit? If you don't have enough sense to hold and, and check what you're putting, you need to come off of it. Amen. If you can't be a Christian on social media, you need to get off social media. The Bible tells us if the member offends you, cut it off. But some of you can shout in the church, but you can't shout on Facebook. Some of you can talk the talk on the aisles and the pews, but you cannot live for God on social media. Come off. Amen. I've had a month of that in here. I had to get that out. That had to come out. you got to hear what I'm saying. It's going to destroy you. It will destroy you. Because if all you can do when you're doing something is let vitriol and garbage come out, it ought to be a signal to you. Sweet water and bitter water can't come out of the same fountain if you're on social media and all you're doing is spewing false doctrine, hate and gossip and posting about this person. You didn't call their names because you ain't got that much uh, bravery to you. But you threw out a little blanket statement. But if you keep doing that stuff, you're going to die lost because you are continuing to walk in mortifying deeds of flesh. 
Now I'm going to tell you something good. I believe in the Holy Ghost. I believe in the Holy Ghost. I promise you, I believe in the power of the Spirit of God. If I didn't believe in the Spirit of God, I wouldn't keep preaching to you because I believe it's going to be the Spirit that's going to help you. Verse 26, likewise, the Spirit helpeth our infirmities. Whatever your weakness is, if your weakness is you don't, you're not real smart, God's going to help you. The, the Bible says that the Spirit helpeth our infirmities. Infirmities are, is, is just a weakness of the flesh. It could be sickness. So whatever it is, whatever your weakness is, the Spirit of God can help you. Please don't say, well, because I got this issue, I guess I'm okay. I don't have. No, no, the Holy Ghost is going to help you. Holy Ghost is going to help you. Holy Ghost is going to help you live for Him. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. Because all you want to pray for is God give you $100. All we want to pray for in the flesh is, God, give me a new car. That's what the flesh wants. But see, the Holy Ghost is going to help you pray that you get patience. Pray that you get some sense about you. Pray that you learn how to keep your mouth shut. Pray that you learn how to take care of your husband or your wife in a godly manner. Pray that you have wisdom how to deal with your bills and things. But if you pray in the Spirit, God will help you with a lot of things. Amen? Oh, I don't believe that, preacher. Thank you. Take The Bible says, ask of anything. And the Lord will give it to you liberally. Ask wisdom. Ask wisdom. Solomon could have asked anything of the Lord. He contemplated it. He said, Lord, give me wisdom. God gave him riches, power, notoriety, and wisdom. Amen. I know we don't have a lot of time. I said three minutes. I took four. Let's stand together. Amen. God is good, amen. Let's lift our hands. I felt the Holy Ghost tonight when I preached to you. I felt the power of God in the house. I believe that there was a spirit of conviction that was in this place. Hallelujah. I believe there was a spirit of conviction. I want you to lift your hands, raise your hand all across the sanctuary. Amen. If you're here tonight and the Lord's been dealing with you in this service, I want you to step forward. If God's been dealing with you in any kind of way, I want you to move forward to an altar place. Because I don't care if it's Wednesday night Bible study, Saturday night, Sunday revival, it doesn't matter. My God, He's going to take out the time to help you. God's willing to take out the time to reach for you where you're at. He's, you've not got so far away that His hand cannot reach you. The Bible says that His hand is not slack concerning His promises. As some men count slackness, God can reach you where you're at. He can reach down in the depths of sin and He can touch you if you'll cry out to Him. He'll touch you if you'll cry out to Him, if you'll repent, if you'll turn your life back to the Lord. Oh, I'm asking somebody to hear the voice of the Lord tonight as I speak to the church. The Bible says, let him that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. That needs to be repentance. I don't care if it's Wednesday night Bible study and everybody's scattered in the building. You're here tonight. You're hearing what God has said to you. Being carnal is not going to help you. Being carnal is not going to help you when the storms of life are coming. When your marriage gets on the rocks, carnality will destroy it. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's time for some of us to repent tonight. It's time that we got our priorities back right with the Lord. Come on, sister. Sing and worship. Lead us in worship as we pray, as we seek the Lord tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord, let there be a transformation in somebody. Let somebody make up their mind tonight that they're going to mortify the deeds of the flesh. That they'll bring their body under subjection. Oh, God, transform us by the renewing of our mind.
Before your presence came and changed me, 
praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Amen. If you received a touch from the Lord tonight, would you raise your hand? Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. What a beautiful presence of the Lord was here tonight in this place to minister. Amen. There was such an unction of the Lord to preach the word, and you received the word, I hope, in the name of the Lord. Amen. Come expecting Sunday, but before Sunday, tomorrow night, addiction recovery here at the church at 7 o'clock. Amen. If you can be here, be here 7 o'clock and bring somebody. I promise you, there's somebody you know that needs deliverance. Amen. God bless you in Jesus' name.